Welcome everybody, welcome to the complete YouTube advertising tutorial. My name is Daryl and today I'm going to show you all how you can master YouTube ads simply and easily. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to run your own YouTube campaign with no problem. And YouTube ads are the number one type of marketing platform that Google has to offer because YouTube ads are very different than other ads. YouTube ads are the only ad that give you a permanent organic growth in the search engine. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. This is my video right here. So how to create e-commerce websites. And this is my watch time. Now YouTube ranks your videos by watch time. That means the more watch time you have, the higher your video will rank in the search engines. So for example, if you're trying to promote your business or your product or your channel, the more watch time you have, the more people will see your video rank on the search engine. So let me give you all an example. This is my video right here, how to create an e-commerce website with WordPress uh, with the Divi theme. So let's go ahead and type that in on YouTube. I'm gonna go over here and just go ahead and paste this right here. Create e-commerce website with Divi theme, click on search. And you're going to see that my video comes up as number one. Now, this could not be possible without YouTube advertisements. So YouTube advertisements is the main reason why this is actually performing so well. And another great part about YouTube ads is, unlike Google AdWords, where you're gonna pay four to five dollars a click, people over here can actually share it. They can like it, they can comment, they can do all sorts of really cool stuff. And YouTube ads is dramatically cheaper than Google AdWords. Instead of paying five to $10 a click, you'll be paying two to 20 cents per view. And also, you guys will actually receive $100 in free credit just to get you started. So even if you make mistakes, don't worry about it. You know, you actually will get a free credit to help you out in this tutorial. So I will talk more about this. So if you guys have liked what you've seen so far, go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe. And let's go ahead now and talk about how easy it is to use YouTube AdWords. So I'll see so you So the all. first thing I wanna do is make sure that you all receive that free $100 credit from YouTube. So go on over to Google and just type in YouTube advertisement, YouTube advertising, okay? And go ahead and click on this one right here, ads.youtube.com. I will also put this link in the description. So if you cannot find it, I'll go ahead and put it in the description so you can find it. And you're brought to a page that looks like this. Now guys, if this changes in, in the next coming months, uh, they do change their website a lot. I'll go ahead and try to change the link accordingly to make sure that you are led to the correct page. So go ahead and scroll down right here. And right here, it's gonna say, get $100 free credit when you spend $25 on video ads. So go ahead and enter in your email. Click on send my code. And you have to enter this captcha. You know, these are getting harder, like as the time goes on, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, if you can't, you know, uh, enter it, just keep trying. It's, it's, these get harder. Okay. So there it is. There is the code. So go ahead and just copy this. Now we actually need to create an AdWords account and creating an AdWords account is free. All you need to do is go over here to Google and type in Google AdWords and go ahead and click on this one right here, google.com dash AdWords. I will also put this link in the description for you all. And you will be brought to a page that looks like this right here. Now you'll have to have a Gmail account or another account in order to sign up for this. So go ahead and click on start now. And if you have already uh, had an AdWords account, you can actually go ahead and just click on uh, sign in over here. If not, it will actually prompt you to enter in an email address, etc. So you can enter in your email address right here and your website, etc. So once you've done all of this, it's going to actually tell you that you actually have to uh, create an account. So you'll look something like this right here. We'll say create a new uh, Google account, go and enter in your email address, create a password, et cetera. After that, you're gonna actually have to verify your account. So you'll be brought to a page that looks something like this right here, where it's going to say, go ahead and check your email account and you know we'll verify it, et cetera. So you'll get an email that looks something like this right here. It's from Google AdWords. And all you need to do is go ahead and click on that link right there, and you'll be brought to your AdWords dashboard. So we brought to a page that looks just like this right here. So this is the Google AdWords dashboard. So congratulations, you made it this far. Um, if you guys have any trouble, uh, you know, you can actually contact Google AdWords if you guys have trouble making an account. So over here, I wanna make sure that you all receive that free $100 gift card before, or I'm sorry, promotional code before we, uh, you know, go on any further. So in order to claim this credit, all you need to do is go on over here to this gear icon and click on billing. Now guys, also, if you have trouble with this coupon code, in fact, if you've actually used AdWords before and you're watching this tutorial, just go ahead and call them and ask them if they have any, any promotional codes for you, if they have any deals or offers. They give them out all the time. Even if you've previously used AdWords, they send one to me. So 
Um, I'll show you mine in just a little bit. So right here, go ahead and click on billing. And you'll be brought to a, a account setup right here. You're gonna have to go ahead and enter in your information such as your address, et cetera, your name. Uh, go ahead and fill all this information out. Now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and log into my account to show you all uh, what it looks like from my point of view. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my password. Alrighty, so it is loading. Now right here, under this little gear icon right here, uh, go ahead and click on this and go to billing. And I'm gonna show you where exactly to go to enter this promotional code. So right here under this transaction history tab, all you need to do is go ahead right here and click on manage promotional codes. Click right here on promotional code and go ahead and enter in that promotional code that you got from YouTube earlier. Now see right here, they just gave me another promotional code where if I spend $150, they will give me another $150 for free. So even if you have already had an AdWords account, uh, just go ahead and let them know that you know you're interested in uh, you know advertising and see if they'll you know give you a coupon code or something like that. So um, that is basically how you would uh, enter in your uh, promotional code. And also, if you want a promotional code from them, if you already use them, just go ahead and contact them. Also, this gear icon. If you guys need help, you can. Click on this little help right here, and they usually have you know phone support, live chat, email. So um, you know sometimes they have it. You know they they they're very selective on when they have it or not. You can just go ahead and email them. Okay, so uh, that is basically the uh, you know the full rundown of how you would pr apply your promotional code for your campaign. So now let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead now and actually create our first campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and close these windows right here. And we're actually going to go ahead and create our first campaign. So if you guys also got that um, another, um, um, let me go ahead and log into my other account right here, just to let you guys see exactly what it looks like. It look a little bit different. So this is how it is for me, but you guys will probably come to a page that looks something like this right here, where it says create your first campaign. Okay. So if you're brand new, uh, it's going to look just like this. If not, you'll be brought to your dashboard. All right, everybody. So let's go ahead now and create our first AdWords campaign. So all you need to do is simply click right here on create your first campaign. So the first thing we need to do is select the type of advertising that we're, we're going to be using. So right here under type, go ahead and select on video. Now go ahead and just give your campaign a name. So I'm just going to put in WordPress. Now there's three types right here, but generally for most people watching, you're probably gonna leave it as standard. So we're basically just trying to drive views, awareness, conversions, etc. Or you can use it for mobile app installs, or you can use it for shopping, but you must have a Google Merchant account already set up. But for this tutorial, we are only going to use standard. And right here we have video formats. So in stream or discovery video ads, and there's also bumper ads. So what are those? Well, an in-stream ad is basically those ads you see all the time on YouTube when you click on a video, and they are the most effective because they're only getting charged when somebody actually watches your ad. If they click on right here, skip to video, you will not be charged. So this right here, in-stream ad, is this right here. So for example, I'm playing the advertisement, and now we can skip the ad. Now remember, if you skip the ad, you will not be charged. So this is super effective and most companies use that. The other type of ad is the video discovery ads, which are terrible ads and I do not recommend these whatsoever. These ads are actually way down here where no one can really see. This, there it is, there it is, that's the ad. And another bad part about this ad is that I can just simply click on this X and close it. So I do not recommend those ads whatsoever because sometimes people won't even see them. But for the in-stream ads, they're actually cheaper and they're more effective. Now, bumper ads are a little bit different. Bumper ads are six second videos that you must create and you cannot skip them. So it forces people to watch them. However, you're getting charged for impressions. That means you're getting charged for people seeing the ad. The in-stream is only when they click on it. So for example, right here, they'd have to actually visit the advertiser's sites and then from there, you will be charged, okay? So uh, that is a little uh, rundown of video and in-stream. So right here, we're gonna select our manual CPV. So our bidding only have CPV because um, unless we're using bumper ads, then we'll do CPM, which is cost per impressions. But, uh, but for us, we're going to just be using uh, CPV. So next right here is our budget. So go ahead and put in maybe $5, something like that. 
whatever you want to put your budget per day. Now, delivery method. So you can have it as standard, which will show as evenly over time, or you can have it as accelerated. So, you know, a lot of people tend to debate this, whether accelerated is better than standard. I actually like accelerated better because let's say, for example, somebody watches this video and they click it or they skip it. It doesn't matter because I'm not being charged. So even if it's showing at a very fast rate, you know, it doesn't really matter because as long as they click on it, then I'm being charged. So you're kind of getting like a free branding awareness. So I'm just going to leave it as standard just for now. Now over here under networks, you're going to go ahead and deselect video partners on the display network. Now, why do I do this? Because the display network is basically those advertisements on other websites like LA Times or, uh, you know, random blogs that we don't really know where it's at. And it's not really relevant to what we're going to be talking about. So if it's on our, another website, we don't have any idea of who's watching it. We don't know anything. So most people will actually go ahead and deselect video partners on the display network because we don't know where it is. And in fact, if you contact Google, they're just going to tell us that it's just our partners. So if I don't know where it is, then forget it, you know, so make sure it's only under YouTube search and YouTube videos. So next we have locations. Now, uh, it depends on your goal. So I actually like to market to the United States, but let's just say you want to market to other countries. You can just go ahead and say, I want to market to India. And then from here, you can actually select, you know, India, the country, or they have certain cities in the United States. You can even market to cities, um, you know, uh, whatever you're trying to market to, you can, you, you can do that. So let's just say, for example, I only want to market to Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California. I'll click on Los Angeles. And then maybe I only want to market to Pasadena, California. Right there, I'll go ahead and add Pasadena. But maybe I don't want my ads to show up in Sacramento. So I'll type in Sacramento, right here, Sacramento, and I'll go ahead and click on exclude. So now my advertisements are only showing in Los Angeles, in Pasadena, but they are not showing in Sacramento, okay? So if you want to do that, you can go ahead and select it. Also, they have the nearby option, but remember, if you're marketing to a country, or I'm sorry, a state, let's say in Washington. Now, if you do Washington and you select nearby, do you think Canada is gonna be a part of that? Probably. So when you're doing this, you need to make sure that if you do that, you might want to exclude the country of Canada. Okay. So that is a little quick rundown of locations. But for most of us, we're just going to go ahead and probably just select the United States, you know, USA or Canada or Mexico or India, wherever you're trying to market to. So uh, that is a little rundown of your locations. So next we have the languages. So languages right here. What languages do your customers speak? So if your language is speak a specific uh, language, then you're going to go ahead and select that. So for example, if my customers speak Spanish and Chinese. I'll go ahead and put that. You know, I don't like how YouTube does that. You know, it's actually Mandarin, but you know, they always say Chinese, but I, I guess that's the way it is. So, um, you know, go ahead and select the language that your customer speaks. Next, we have devices. So if you want to get very advanced, which probably most of us will not do this, you can actually market to specific devices, specific operating systems, specific carriers, etc. So right here, if I click on edit, you're going to see uh, right here on default, they're going to go ahead and market to everybody, which makes sense. But you can actually go ahead and say, let me choose. And maybe you want to only market to people on the iOS devices. Maybe you have an app that is just for iPhones. So that would be an ideal situation. But for most of us, we're probably just going to leave it as all operating systems. And here you can even get more advanced and select the type of devices. So if I click on the iOS right here, you're going to see I can do, you know, iPhone or iPod touch or iPad, etc. And lastly, right here is the carrier. So for example, we can go ahead and market to people on Sprint, on, you know, T-Mobile, etc. But, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that um, you know, these are all available for everybody and I'm going to go ahead and close this. So the advanced section guys, uh, most of us will not use it. I don't really use it. So don't worry about it. Don't be overwhelmed. Uh, I would probably just skip it. So next we have the schedule. So if you want, you can actually have your advertisements have a schedule. So for example, you can have like a start date and end date, and you can also create a custom schedule. Now me personally, I don't really care. I just like to make sure that my budget is reached every day and that I've maxed out my budget and that people have seen my ad. But if you're on a specific category where maybe you have like a Christmas sale or something like that, you might want to set a specific schedule. 
but um, I personally don't, but it is recommended. So if you want to have your own personal schedule, you can go ahead and set that right here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and close this right here and we're gonna go to add delivery. So add delivery, optimize for views, optimize for conversions or rotate evenly. Now for Google AdWords, you know, a lot of people like to use uh, rotate evenly, but for YouTube ads, I kind of like optimize for views or it's just going to show you know your your message as much as possible. And the reason for that is, like I said earlier, right here we talked about this ad. Even if this does show on other people's you know um, computers when they search, you're not being charged for this. Only when they click on the ad, you will be charged. So, and like I said, in a sense, you're getting free advertisement. This is like a free uh, brand awareness because this company right here, I've already seen it. I've already been introduced to it, and I haven't even clicked on their ad. So, they're actually getting kind of free advertising in a way. So that's why I like to do optimize for views. But for most of us, we're gonna go ahead and just select rotate evenly, which is more on the safe side. You know, if you don't wanna blow through your budget too fast, I personally like to be a little bit more aggressive, but for beginners, I would go ahead and select rotate evenly. So next you have frequency capping. So what frequency actually is, is the number of time the same person has seen your ad. But you know, for most of us beginning, we probably won't even be involved with frequency capping. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this section. But if you're interested more on it, you can read you know, these question marks right here. I personally don't really use um, frequency capping, but the reason why it's relevant is because the person that is seeing your ad is seeing it over and over and over and not really engaging, perhaps you would want to increase your market. So for example, let's say you're marketing to business, but the same guy seeing your ad all the time. Maybe you wanna expand it to business technology, business marketing, business uh, services, business you know, uh, employment to sort of help lower your frequency, okay? And then content exclusions, by default, they actually have this selected where your ad will not be seen by mature audiences or content not yet labeled. So if you want to go ahead and select some more content exclusions, you can do that here. But by default, YouTube does a pretty good job at selecting the correct default. So I'm gonna click on cancel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and continue. All right. All right, so this is where all the magic happens. This is where all the fun stuff is, and this is where we will talk about placements. We will talk about all sorts of really cool stuff for your video. So first, go ahead and give your ad group a name right here. So right here, I'm gonna put DV theme. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select the URL for the video. So right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this URL, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put this right here. All right, so now you're gonna see that there is an in-stream ad and also a video discovery ad. So remember earlier we talked about this right here is the in-stream ad and this ad way down here is the discovery ad. Oh, oh yeah, I deleted it. So uh, that is the uh, discovery ad. So right here, we're first gonna do um, in-stream ads and then if you would like to do it, you can do video ad discoveries as well. So click on this in-stream ad now right here, you're gonna do a display URL. So you see right here on this little screen where it's going to basically tell people where to go. Now it's just a display URL. So for example, I'll type in w.darylwilson.com dash you know, e-commerce. And then the final URL will actually take them to this page right here. So remember, this is an example. You know, I, I, whatever you're trying to accomplish, um, this is the display URL and this is the final URL. Now you can also use your own image or generate from your video. Now, generally you'd probably want to leave it as auto-generated from your image because it's relevant to what you are trying to show people. If not, you can click on upload my own image. Now you must make sure the pixels are 300 by 600 and you can go ahead and choose it and upload it right there. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and give our ad a name. So I'm gonna put WordPress tutorial. Tutorial, just like that. Now, maximum CPV. So this is the most you are willing to pay for somebody to click on your uh, ad. So for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put 10 cents. Or we can even go as low as five cents, but it really depends on your market. Some you know, uh, ads will take maybe five cents. I know for movie junkies and TV viewers, it's very cheap, it's like three cents. But for business, te business technology, it can go up to like maybe 20 cents a, a view. So right here is also your video bid adjustment. So YouTube will actually adjust your video during like popular peak times. I personally don't use popular video bid adjustment because as long as I hit my budget, I don't want them to raise my bid or et cetera. 
So if you would like to use a video bit adjustment, you can go ahead and put maybe like 10%. So for example, your $10, your, your, your bid will be $11. So it's going to raise your bid by 10% during peak hours to get uh, optimal views. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this blank. I do not like using the popular bid adjustments. So next we have demographics. Now YouTube actually, I'm sorry, Google AdWords actually introduced a new feature, which is actually household income, which is pretty cool. So if you're advertising something very expensive, like carnival cruises or luxury cars, the top 10 you know, to 20% would be a good idea to market to. So um, you, know, you can actually go ahead and select this. Maybe you only wanna market to females or something like you know, between the ages of you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish. You can go by parental status as well. Or you can actually, you know, I leave all of them as unknown because sometimes we just don't have that much information and you don't really want to exclude people. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to leave it as unknown or not a parent or age, or you can select by household income. So right here, I'm going to click on cancel. Now interests. So interest is very important, guys. Now, I personally use interest the most and I have amazing results with interest. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and say, what are your interests? Now, there is a very, very good source to find out what your interest is because this right here is basically the entire battle you're gonna have with YouTube advertising. So I'm gonna go to Google Analytics right here. Now, if you guys don't have Google Analytics installed, you guys can actually visit one of my tutorials where I actually show you how to install Google Analytics. And the great part about Google Analytics is that they will actually tell you who is visiting your website. So this is my Google Analytics right here. And if I go down to my interests and I click on affinity categories, you're gonna see that I have all these different types of people. So I have technophilia, shutterbugs, social movie enthusiasts, movie lovers, TV lovers, etc. So it looks like my main type of audience that is most interested in my product is technophilies. So over here, we can go ahead and type in technophilies. So techno, there it is right here. So I can type in technophilies. I can add in movie lovers and I can add in other people like Shutterbugs or social movie enthusiasts. Now this information is only provided by Google Analytics. So if you guys you know, want to get this information, go ahead and install Google Analytics. It's a free service, it doesn't cost anything. So that's how I got my information and that's how I have my niche and I have some incredible click-through rates. I have around a 60 to 70% click-through rate. That means Every time somebody sees my ad, at least 60 to 70% of them click on my ad, which is very impressive. So uh, go ahead and find out your market niche. It does take a lot of time, guys. And also we have in market. So the difference between the two is affinity is more of a long-term audience. These people are generally always engaging with this kind of content. In market is people who are sort of actively searching for this kind of stuff. So for example, Business technology, business services, that would be a good one. So I'm gonna to go to my Google Analytics right here and I'm going to go to in-market segments and find out who is sort of searching for this. So right here I have business services, business technology, web services, and web design, and also employment. Now the reason why employment is there is probably because people who are looking for a job might actually be trying to create their own website. So over here I might actually want to include employment I can type in you know business. So right here, I'll type in business right here for the in market. And right here, I have business services, business technology, education, all sorts of really cool stuff to pick from. Now, the reason why I prefer interest is because YouTube already has all the information from people on YouTube. So you don't need to use AdWords. You don't need to use uh, keywords or any of that stuff. YouTube already knows everything about people on YouTube. So right here, I'm gonna type in something like, um, Business, or let's type in employment. Employment, so right here we have employment, we have all these type of jobs, so I can just go ahead and just select employment, and then right there I will be done with it. So I have a large audience now that I can market to that I know is interested in my product. All right, so go ahead and mess around with these settings of interest. Now, if you don't want to use this right here, if you're not sure, don't worry, because we're going to actually talk more about the other options. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Now we also have this right here, narrow your targeting. So this will actually be a little bit more in depth. 
Now, I do not recommend keywords for beginners. I do not recommend keywords for AdWords. I'm sorry, for YouTube ads whatsoever. I think it is a total waste because YouTube already has information about people surfing on YouTube. So why do you have to do keyword research? It's almost irrelevant. Now, Google AdWords, you're kind of forced to do that because you don't really know your audience yet. But for AdWords, I'm sorry, for YouTube ads, we already know the audience. So for example, let's go ahead and skip keywords and we'll go to placement. All right, so right here, so what is placement? Placement is placing a specific ad on a YouTube channel or video. So if I click on search for placements, now I'm doing WordPress tutorials and I'm also sponsoring the Divi theme. So maybe I wanna type in Divi theme right here and see what comes up. Now, if you guys are you know, selling clothes, you can just do some research, but I will talk about that on the next section. So right here, Elegant Themes, they are the sole creator of the Divi theme. So maybe I wanna go ahead and market on their channel because I want them to learn how to use the Divi theme, not just buy it. So right here, I can select this right here, and now I am marketing on Elegant Themes. Now you can also do YouTube videos as well. So let's say right here, there's this video introducing Divi theme. I can go ahead and say, you know what, I wanna market on the Divi theme channel or on those specific videos because I want them to watch my tutorials. So I can select the specific video. Now websites, same thing. We can go ahead and select a specific website to market on. So for example, see if I can type in elegant themes. So it does not come up, but um, you know there are a list of other relevant uh, websites you can choose from. But most of the time I just use YouTube videos, but websites, they do have a selection of what you can market on. So let's type in something like WordPress. And let's see what comes up here. So template.net, you know, these are actually websites that are relevant to WordPress, but I might not want to use that. So I might want to just stick on YouTube videos and also the channels as well, okay? So that is a little rundown of placements. So another example of how you can use it, let's say you're selling clothes, all right? Let's just say you're selling clothes. So who sells clothes? So this is where you have to sort of do some critical thinking. Maybe companies like JCPenney, Macy's, um, uh, if you're selling lingerie, Victoria's Secrets. So we can actually market on their specific channel. So let's type in JCPenney's. So I'm typing JCPenney's and now it's loading. And JCPenney's actually has a YouTube channel. So if you're selling something, you can go ahead and market on their specific channel right there, okay? So that is basically the rundown of placements. That's why I don't recommend keywords. You know, we already have a huge audience, we know where to find them, we know what they're watching, etc. So now we've done, I've shown you all placements. Let's go ahead now and talk about the next one, which is actually gonna be topics. Now, we will come to remarketing at the end of the tutorial. Remarketing is essential, guys. So that means people who visit your videos, we want to bring them back later. And remarketing is a big part in marketing. So I will talk about that at the end of the tutorial. I will show you how you can create your marketing campaign. So now we're gonna to go to topics. So this was basically the same thing a little bit earlier. So search by a related term, phrase, or URL. So for example, I'm just gonna type in WordPress. Now it's basically getting all the topics that are relevant to WordPress. So all these people that are sort of watching these, uh, you know, these videos or whatever their you know, web design, et cetera, we're gonna go ahead and market to them by the topics. So maybe I wanna type in Divi theme. It doesn't come up guys, you know, it just happens sometimes, but these actually right here are all relevant to Divi theme. Maybe people doing programming or, um, you know, uh, web services have some sort of relation with the Divi theme. So topics are also very good to use. Now let's just go ahead and put in clothes. So let's say you are selling clothes right here. You can market to beauty and fitness, fashion and style, etc. So you can go ahead and select all these that are relevant to your business right here. Okay. So that is basically topics. It's very easy and YouTube knows the users. So it will actually select them accordingly to people who actually visit these websites the most or these YouTube channels the most. So that's why I highly recommend using, uh, I, I actually prefer using interest the most. After that, I actually like using topics and then placements. And lastly, uh, keywords. Now, the reason why I do not recommend keywords for anybody is because keywords are, very difficult to learn as a beginner. Now there's four types of keywords. There's a broad, there's a broad modified, there's a phrase, and then there's an exact match. I will put more 
about keywords in the description, but I'll go ahead and give you a quick rundown of keywords. So if I type in WordPress right here, this is actually a broad keyword. So if somebody does a search for cool WordPress shirts, your ad is gonna show up because remember, we're doing a broad search of WordPress. Somebody types in premium WordPress plugins, your ad will show up because this is actually a broad search and it's not recommended by even a lot of people who use Google AdWords. Quickly, so if you're interested in learning AdWords and you really want to learn how to pick up that skill and get your AdWords certification, you can take this course on Udemy. This is the highest rated course on Udemy with over 11,000 students with over 2,946 ratings. It is very good. And with my link, you guys will receive a large discount. So if you guys are interested in taking this course and fully mastering how to use AdWords, you guys can take this course. Uh, I took it myself. It's very good. It's very long. You know, it's actually 16 hours of content, but you know, he provides a lot of valuable information that you will use to fully master AdWords. So uh, this is just an option. So back to the tutorial. So the next one right here is actually called broad modified which is a little bit better, but it's still a little bit reckless. So if I put in right here, you have to put the plus sign, put in WordPress, and then another, another plus sign right here that says themes. That's basically saying somebody actually must type in WordPress and themes for my ad to show up. But let's just say somebody types in free WordPress themes. Is your ad going to show up? Yes, yes it will. So you wanna make sure that you are using the correct keyword. If you decide to use keywords, I do not recommend keywords for beginners. So let's just say you want to go ahead and make sure nobody types in, or you're, that your ad will not show up if somebody types in free. All you need to do is type in this negative sign right here. And this is actually a negative keyword. So if you add this right here, if somebody types in free, your ad will not show up when they type in word, free WordPress themes. Okay, so that is a quick rundown of Modified broad, I don't recommend it for beginners, but you're more than welcome to use modified. So the next thing that we have is actually called the phrase. Phrase is a little bit better. So if I type in this little symbol right here, to, I believe it's the colon or it's like the apostrophe, I, I don't know what symbol that is, it's next to your enter sign. Now if I type in WordPress plugins and then type this right here and enter that in keywords, now this is saying, Whenever somebody types in WordPress plugins, my ad will show up, but those must be together. So this must be together. So for example, if somebody types in free WordPress plugins, my ad will show up. If somebody types in WordPress free plugins, just like that, my ad will not show up because WordPress and, I'm sorry, WordPress and plugin are not together. So your ad will probably not show up in the search results, okay? So that is a quick rundown of broad, I'm sorry, of phrase. So this is phrase, but I don't recommend it. You know, I think that you know, uh, you shouldn't use it because it's just, it's just difficult to do keyword research. I mean, people pay companies thousands of dollars to do keyword research and you know, I would just not recommend it. Now guys, I'm not 100% sure if your ad will show if it's like this. You know, there are some discrepancies saying that as long as these are in the words right here, you know, they will not show, it, it might show. So I'm not, you know, 100% if your ad will show if it looks like this and you enter in, um, you know, phrase modified, my apologies. I am certain, but I believe it could or could not show, okay? So the last thing I wanna do is the exact. And if you're gonna use keywords, I recommend exact. That means you enter this bracket symbol and type in WordPress themes. Now this right here is saying, you must type in exactly WordPress and themes for your ad to show up. So if they do not type in this exact keyword, your ad will not show up. So somebody types in cool WordPress themes and enter in, you know, they search uh, YouTube, your ad will not show up. It must be exact. So that is exact keywords. So I like that because if somebody types in free WordPress themes and you're trying to sell them, then your ad will not show up. You only want people that are interested in a product and are actually willing to buy it. You don't want people saying free this, free this, free this. I know that can be a headache. So that is a little bit about keywords. Now, you might wanna double check for the um, for the phrase type. The phrase type I've had issues before in the past, but like I said, I will put a description about keywords 
uh, in the description. So if I was wrong, my apologies. I mostly use the um, the broad modified and exact when I use uh, AdWords, but for this tutorial, I do not recommend AdWords. Okay, but that is a quick rundown of using keywords. All right, so I'm going to click on save. Now I've set my ad, so everything looks you know good. Everything looks like it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save ad group. All right, so it looks like I entered in the wrong URL. So right here, it says uh, some words don't comply with the advertising policy. This is actually a wrong URL. So for this right here, I'm just going to go ahead and select this YouTube um, one right here. So for the details, you guys might want to check that. Um, I'm, you have to enter the HTTP. Don't forget that. All right. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and enter in uh, this right here and then click on save ad group. All right. So that is basically the the end of how you would market on that. Now, this is actually telling me that I have to link my other AdWords account. So I'm actually going to go ahead and log into my other AdWords account because this is just a tutorial. Uh, this wasn't, um, you know, this this isn't an official account. All right. So now I want to actually show you all the um, the other ad. So we, we did in stream. So this right here was the in stream ad. And I recommend this more than anything else. But for those of you who want those ads way down here, which I have to undo, I will show you how you can have these text ads. So let's go ahead now and go to campaigns. And we're actually going to create a campaign. Okay, so I deleted that other campaign. Now I'm going to click on create your first campaign again. And we're actually going to create another campaign. So right here, under type, I'm going to click on video. Now over here, uh, we want to make sure that it's under in stream. And same thing, guys, just go ahead and select your budget. And I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to put you United States and I'm going to click on save and continue. All right. So I'm going to enter in the YouTube video again. OK, now this time I'm going to select video discovery ad. So you see the ad right here, right? So headline. How to make how to make an e-commerce website. With Divi theme with Divi theme. Now guys, a good tip is most of these letters you want capital, you know, just in the world of web design, everybody likes that. It just gets more attention. You want to capitalize every single letter, except if it's like, um, you know, e-commerce, you might want to just do the C and W or something like W like that. You guys get the idea in the description, you know, learn how to make a WordPress website. So learn how to make a WordPress website. All right, so it looks like I hit my max. So right here, you guys can see it says negative two. That means that I've typed in too much. So how can I make this smaller? Well, I can go ahead and say just site, just like that. So I learn how to make a WordPress website. I show you step by step. And then from there, you know, we can actually go ahead and set the landing page of the chat of the page on YouTube or the video page on YouTube, etc. So go ahead and give it a name. So I'll just type in Divi theme, Divi theme tutorial. Alrighty, so you guys can see, we can actually go ahead and select, you know, where we would like it right here, right here, right here, etc. So I personally recommend something like, uh, let's see where we can put it. You know, it's really up to you. Yeah, at this point, I'm just showing you how to do it. But uh, you know, that's basically what it, what it's actually going to look like. So right here, the max CPV, same thing, guys, I'll go and put 10 cents and then popular adjustments. I'm not going to put anything and that's it. So now you're actually creating a video discovery ad. And remember, you can have as many ads running as you would like. All right. And also for the thumbnail, you guys can select the thumbnail for it. Something like this, etc. Now, I don't believe you can change the thumbnail for this right for the for the for the discovery ad. I'm not sure. So um, if they introduce that in the future, that would be pretty cool. But it looks like you guys cannot change the uh, text ad on the front. All right. So other than that, we're finished with basically those two advertisements. Now, I want to introduce you all to uh, the remarketing campaign, which is very, very important, guys. Um, everybody should be using a remarketing campaign. So over here, I'm going to click on cancel. All right. And now in order to start your marketing campaign, you're going to have to basically 
start gathering information. So the first thing we need to do to start a marketing campaign is going down here to shared library and under audiences, we're going to click on view. Alrighty. So right here it says create a marketing list, you know, visitors to your websites, YouTube visitors, etc. So we want to go ahead and select people who interact with your YouTube channel or video. We want to create a list for them. So I'm going to click on create a list. Now you're going to have to go ahead and uh, put, put your, um, you know, once you verified your account, you will actually get information or I'll go ahead and just uh, log into my other account. Just, just to make sure that I give you guys a good example of what it looks like. All right. So I'm going to go down over here to my shared libraries and under audiences, I'm going to go to view. And I'm going to go ahead and select my remarketing list. So right here, I'm going to select my remarketing list and I'm going to go ahead and put YouTube users. So right here, you guys can see that list type viewed any video from a channel, visited a channel page, liked any video as a channel. Now I would personally select liked because that means you're trying to get people who are interested in your video to see your newer content. But remember, you can do anything you would like, maybe subscribe to a channel, you know, a video from a channel, etc. All right. So once you've done that, you can select your YouTube channel, of course, give your list a name right here. You can go ahead and set your membership duration. So you can set the cookies. So for example, you know, 30 days is pretty good. So that means you will keep that information for 30 days. You don't want to keep it too long because you don't want to remarket to the same people forever, you know? So maybe a 30 day cookie is good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put in maybe 30 days. Now status, you want it open. So what open means is that you are actually gathering information on new, new people visiting your channel. Closed means you're not accepting uh, new visitors at that time. You will only market to people that are currently on your list. And right here, you can do the initial list size, which includes users from the last 30 days, which you probably want to start out with, or you can start out with an empty list. Okay. Now, once you're done doing this, you're just going to click on create, create a list. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right here and there you go. So you guys can see this right here, my, re my YouTube remarketing, I have actually have 82,000 people and it's growing every day. So the more people that visit your YouTube channel, the bigger your list will become. So that is basically how you create the remarketing list. Now, in order to market this, we're going to have to actually create a campaign for it. So earlier we talked about these campaigns right here. So I'm going to go over here to, um, you know, campaigns and I'm just going to show you really quickly how you can have a secondary marketing campaign. And then I will talk about all these options right here and what they mean in my dashboard. Okay. So I'm gonna click on campaign and go to video. And now we're going to set up a remarketing campaign. And guys, I strongly recommend to have a remarketing campaign. It's very good. You don't have to have one. If you're new, you know, you don't have to, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyways, just for tutorial purposes. So, um, I'm going to scroll down here. Oh, I have to put a budget. So I'm going to go ahead and put $5. And I'm going to scroll down right here and go to save and continue. Alrighty. And then, you know, select the YouTube video, et cetera. You guys, you guys, you, you guys know the routine by now. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just keep going down. You know, now when you get down to narrow your targeting right here, you're going to want to select remarketing. So remember target people who visit parts of your website. So go ahead and click on that. Now it's going to say, Right here, you're going to see that list. So right here, I have the list size of 82,000 people, which in the past 30 days, I have attracted 82,000 people. And this is my current new list. So all you need to do is go ahead and select your list and click on done. Now, this will actually create a secondary marketing campaign where you will start attracting people who only have visited your YouTube content in the past 30 days. All right. So that is a little rundown of remarketing. If I were you guys, I would probably have maybe just a regular campaign, open your list, you know, get information from them later on, maybe in a month or so, start marketing that list, start your remarketing campaign. You are losing tons of people who are interested in your product because maybe they just forget about your channel. You know, we're not being aggressive. We're just saying, Hey, you know, don't forget about my channel because I forget about those things all the time. All right. So next I want to talk about the statistics here. So this is my campaign right here. My budget is $20 and right now I'm legit by budget. So because I have rotate evenly, 
they're saying, you know, we're going to go ahead and, and wait maybe an hour and start showing your ad again because your budget is uh, reached. I have impressions. So impression is how many times the person actually saw the ad. Interactions is how many times people actually interacted with the video when they saw it. So right here I have 6,400 impressions and 33 or 3,300 people actually interacted with that content, meaning they clicked on it or they've done something with it, etc. So the interaction rate is actually these two divided by. So a view rate of 52% is pretty good, you know. So that means whenever I show an ad, at least 52% will actually engage in it, which is very good. My average cost per view is only 12 cents, so guys. That is incredibly good, and I believe the higher the uh, interaction rate, the cheaper your ad will cost. Now. That is a myth. You might want to contact Google, um, you know, the Google support team up here. But for AdWords, that is true. They will actually give you a quality score. So basically saying if your ad is relevant, it's good, they're clicking on it, Google will actually say, all right, well, we'll give you a discount and we'll put you up higher. So, so they kind of reward you in a way for, you know, providing qual quality ads. Next, we have our cost. So this is my current cost that I've spent over the month and this is right here over the year so i've spent around four thousand dollars now video played too so this is basically saying they've watched at least 25 percent of your ad 50 percent of your ad 75 percent of your ad or they have watched the entire ad so 2.61 percent have actually just watched the entire ad which is kind of crazy because that's like a super long tutorial now earn subscribers how many subscribers did you get from that if you have fewer than three, it will not be reported. Earned views. So this is saying, out of all these views I have, this means they're actually going around my YouTube channel, they're engaging in other content, they're you know checking stuff out, etc. Shares. So how many shares do I have? Well, nobody shared my content. That's sad, but you know it's 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 there and it's available. So that's always good, you know, because Google AdWords does not have that. You know, they don't have that. Now comments. How many people have actually commented? that were, was actually coming from my ad. And it looks like uh, nobody has commented as well. So if you guys actually wanna go ahead and edit it, you guys can click on the, um, the campaign itself. And then right here, you'll get more information. You can check your settings. Up here, you can go ahead and recheck your budget. So remember how earlier we set our campaign name? You can go ahead and change all that information, like your budgets. You can go ahead and change you know, your location. So you can always re-change your ad, guys. Don't think that it's set in stone and that you have to leave it. So over here, you can go ahead and add another ad in your ad group. So you guys can see right here, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's running. So these options right here, guys, they're just statistics. I know it looks very overwhelming and confusing, but they're just trying to show you what, you, you know, what you've got so far. So also video targeting. If you select uh, video targeting right here, this is where you can change it. So remember earlier how we talked about those, you know, interests and everything. So I'm going to click on interest right here. Now I'm going to scroll down. Now guys, this part is very important. So these are the interests I selected. So let's do some critical thinking. Let's do it together. All right. So this right here, computers and peripherals right here, I have a view rate of 56%, which is pretty good. So this is a good segment. Software is a good segment. These are all pretty good segments. If you guys come across something, you're getting around 30% or less, I would actually uh, change it. Now, another thing I wanna show you all is the difference between in-stream ads and also the difference between text ads. There is a large difference. So I'm gonna show you uh, my analytics right here, and I'm gonna show you the backs, you know, the, the uh, behind the curtains of uh, why in-stream ads are 10 times better than those other ads. All right, so these are my videos right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go to, to um, I need to find my video really fast. So I wanna give you guys a perfect example of why you should never use those other ads. Cause I have one video and you guys are gonna be astounded by the difference. All right, so right here, I'm gonna go to, go to this one right here. So this one right here, I'm gonna show you all the analytics behind mm -hmm. it. And I'm gonna show you the difference between in-stream and text ads. All right, so I'm gonna do the last or lifetime right here. And I'm gonna scroll down right here to YouTube advertising. All right guys, so remember in-stream. So I have 50,000 minutes watched from in-stream ads. I have 2,800 views. I have an average view duration of 17 minutes. Video discovery. 
look how awful this is. 3,800 views, only 2,700 minutes. These are those little tiny text ads that you see at the bottom of the page that no one really knows about. That's why I always recommend in-stream. So you guys can see the difference of quality right here. In-stream, very high quality, very relevant. Text ads, very not relevant, very terrible, total waste of money. So if you guys are using uh, ads, I recommend using in-stream. They are 10 times more powerful than those other text ads. Those people doing text ads, they probably just don't know about it. So remember guys, if you are trying to find out if a certain segment is interested in your product, also make sure to check this other section out. This will basically tell you what group is actually viewing it the most. And it looks like right here, Technophilies is my highest view rate. So you guys can see I have the most views, they're costing me the most money, and it looks great. You know, I have 3,400 impressions from them, and at least 57% of them are clicking on the ad. And we can have that same analytics right here that we got from the affinity category. So you guys can see technical affiliates are people most interested in my product. All right, guys. So other than that, I think that's probably the end of the tutorial, guys. If you guys have any other questions or if I didn't cover something or you guys are not sure about you know, your marketing campaign. Now, guys, uh, really quickly, if your impressions do not show, you will need to raise your budget. Now, the reason why that is, is because your budget is not high enough. I'm sorry, if, you're, if your average uh, cost per view is not high enough, YouTube ads will not show your ad, all right? So if we uh, you know, click on this right here, you can actually go ahead and change this right here on the max TPV. Maybe change it to like 15 cents or 20 cents or keep raising it or lowering it. If you're getting a lot of impressions, you can go ahead and lower a little bit. You know, If you're getting too much, you can go ahead and, um, or I'm sorry, if you're not getting enough, you can go ahead and raise it. So that is a good way to find out. Also, you can always go ahead and contact the YouTube uh, help desk. But I gotta be honest, they're not as helpful as you think they would be. Uh, a lot of them just tell me, raise budget, raise budget, raise budget. And I'm like, come on, man, that's not the problem. You know, They just want me to waste money over here. So uh, other than that, guys, that's it. I hope you guys have fun with YouTube ads. It's very simple, it's very effective, and this will definitely help your YouTube channel out. It will help you rank on the search engines organically, et cetera. So I'll see you all later.